and who's putting your best interest first. Make sense? Yeah. That's what we do. Right? You could say we run a team, we're nationwide, we sell a lot of homes. We're not worried about a paycheck, we're worried about getting you the most money, which is ultimately what's most important in this scenario, right? That puts a different perspective in her mind too. So I'm just giving you, and with the driver, I'm gonna say half of what I say or less, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to massage her a little bit, you know? So with a lady like that, you have to kind of step back. Cause you're more like me, you just like, dude, sign the fucking contract, stop being a punk. And, and that's why the listing appointment from the week before went great because the lady was like a straight shooter like me and I asked her prequel yeah. questions. She's like, yes, okay, yeah. cool. When I went in, it took like 20 minutes, sign it, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. That's why you guys have to just be more versatile and be able to adjust to who you're talking to. It is like an older lady you said? Yeah. Yeah, some of them are very like, you know, they want to tell you their life story. Like, oh, you remind, <laughs> you remind me of my cousins, you know, or my uncles, you know, fucking son or whatever. Especially you because you're even younger. They'll be like, oh, you remind me of my son. My dad, your son must be a badass salesman, man. That's what I was saying, right? Because it's funny, right? Have you gotten this lady to laugh a little bit yet or no? Mm, no. No? Okay. No, not yet. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, and then you can even bring up that example. Say, yeah, a lot of realtors have been pushing you, right? And I'm sure you've seen this, that little quote where the people uh, drive around in the vans that say, like, oh, we'll sell your house for 1%, or they have those signs, we'll buy your house and sell it for 1% fee or whatever. Uh -huh. Those are those agents. And do you know why they do that? They don't have any business. Boom, exactly. You see how I had him fill in the blank? Now every time she sees those vans, instead of thinking I can save money, she thinks they don't have business. Oh. So you just reframe that. I, I do that all the time. But I set it up by saying the average agent only sells three or four houses a year. Yeah. Then I brought that up, so it's already pre-framed and ready. I, you know, we know we, we know the whole three, four houses, but I guess the way you put it there, like yeah. you, you're like, I'm gonna do A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Sequential, yeah. Sequential, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You're leading the conversation, even though yeah. she may not realize that like, you're leading because you, you want to get to it. Yeah. And just little yeah. stuff. Does that make sense? Cool. And then I ask, do you know why? Because I never want to assume. We do that a lot. We yeah. assume. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, of course, when people see a discount broker, they're gonna think that guy doesn't fucking sell. But they think, I'm gonna save money. That's why I brought it up. So you may thought, but exactly, you said it. Right? Now, if, she, if he didn't say it, then I would say, well, you know, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. Let's say, oh, it's a cheaper option. Let's say he says that and say, look, if I, if I as an agent want to contact you or someone else, my goal is to separate myself and make it easier for you to choose me to make myself look the best, right? So in my advertising efforts and my marketing efforts, if I have nothing else to show, to show that I'm better, right? I sell more homes, we get you more money, whatever it is. What's the one thing that I can do to make myself seem more attractive to people. Be cheaper. Be cheaper. So that's like my last effort. If I have nothing else, lower the price. Right? And we see this with products, services, real estate, everything. But does that necessarily mean it's gonna be the best person for the job? I guess not. Right? You don't know. Right? You know, maybe you still interview them, sure. But you wanna at least be able to compare. Right? See, so now that's it's a different way of doing it, but I, I always want to let them fill in the blanks and make it easier for me to, because I, I don't like talking shit about people and saying, oh, he sucks, he's cheap, but I, I just go over the whole concept with them so then it, it's easier, right? And in this case, it doesn't sound like she's just choosing somebody based on commission, so she doesn't have to, or he doesn't have to worry about that with her, but that's something you guys can have. Mm -hmm. Like when they say, what's your commission? And they like grill you on it, like the example I gave you guys a couple weeks ago. You're like, well, so it sounds like, David, you're making the decision based on just what somebody's commission is, and you're going to choose them based on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got a second for me to tell you why that's probably not the best choice for you? Whether you hire me or not doesn't matter, but can I give you a little bit of insight on it? Sure. Yeah, I'll just throw that in there in case they think I'm just saying that shit, right? Whether you hire me or not is <laughs> irrelevant, but is it cool if I you know, share with you maybe a different strategy that might help you, regardless of who you choose? Sure. And I'm giving you more words that we could, with her, it's just like, can I tell you why that's a bad idea? With her, she might hang up on you when you do that. But if you say, look, whether you hire me or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But can I share with you a little information to make your decision-making process a little easier? Or why choosing based on just commission isn't the wisest choice? All right, and then I can go into it, right? I don't think you've heard this. So I say, look, if it was there, I would say, look, David. So if you would select based on commission, 
there would be an underlying assumption there that we all do the same thing, and it's just we all have different commissions, right? Right. Yeah. Or are you aware of, like as an example, what me and my team offer versus the average agent? No, not, not really. Then, then, how could it, then how could it be a fair decision to make it based on just the commission? You know, obviously, I just want to, I just want to net the most in my pocket, so exactly. yeah. Okay, I want cool. to get the most, yeah. Now, are you aware, uh, real quick, are you aware of how many homes the average agent sells? We're right back into that, right? Well, just so you know, my team, right? I mean, you can fill in the blank. My team sold 53 properties last year. How does that compare to three to four in a year? It's a lot. So who do you think would have more experience? Who do you think could probably get you more money? Probably, probably you guys. Cool. Yeah. So would it be worth a 10-minute meeting then to see if we could compare to the other person? Sure. If I want to be more direct, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So... Now, the more information I'm giving you, David, this is somebody who might be a little older, I have to massage them more. Uh, this is language patterns. The, the more information I'm giving you, David, the more you're beginning to see that maybe that wasn't the best or only way of choosing somebody, right? Yeah, I, I can see why. Cool. Now, um, that's like what I said is like, that gets people to think a certain way. It's called language patterns. Yeah. And the more I blank, the more you blank. You can say whatever you want. I could just make shit up at that point if I want. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I could say, though, you know, and, and the longer we're speaking, the more you're seeing that I'm probably worth meeting with, huh? Yeah. You see? Yeah. See, even she's, like, thinking, like, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you need to fill in the blank, so it makes your sure. mind kind of search. Damn. Versus just being, right? And that's just yeah. basic from one lecture, that's one line that I gave, you know, like, <laughs> six months ago or a year ago. Well, fuck, I've been talking about this shit for years, right? It's just now you're seeing situations where we can put this stuff in, right? And maybe you don't even have to use that. Like, you don't have to use that shit with most people. That's more just little stuff you can throw in here and there if you need to get somebody like over the hump to meet with you, you know? You know, we've had a 10 minute conversation so far. I understand you're being hesitant, David. Um, now, have you learned anything on our call? Have I given you any new information that no other realtor has told you? Yeah. I see you. I'm even like nodding my head while I'm saying it because that's what you want to do. Like it makes sense, right? Like you don't have to be like this, but you know, give a little, a little subtle. All right, now you don't want to do that, right? <laughs> And you'll see people will be like, oh, no. It's, 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 it's natural. Do you want to price the home where it will sell, or are you okay with it sitting on the market for a long time? Like, I'm, I still do that all the time, even when I meet with people, right? Mm -hmm. It's just normal. But that's how I can maybe get somebody over the hump or somebody that's just focusing on commission. Right. All it is is a reframe. But the one I did with him, you kind of set it up, and then you stack like that, and it makes it a lot more effective because then it'll be that second time when I asked him, you know, what does it tell you? Is that, well, they're probably not that good, or they have no business, they're not selling a lot of homes. It's because of the point that I made previously, yeah. right? Now it's okay. easier for them to go along that, that line. Mm -hmm. But that's an education process, and that's why I always throw in the line. You know, and I understand you're being hesitant or you don't want to meet yet, but let me ask you one question. Have you at least learned something new being on the phone with me for the last five minutes? A couple of things. So yeah. the real question is, what else do I know, right? Do right. you think we might know something that could at least assist you in getting your home sold the second time, whether it's now or in the future? Probably. Cool. So if you had the information that you knew for a fact would cause your home to sell and you have that information now, how would that change your decision? It would be sold. It would be out of here, man. So you would yeah. want to sell now. Yeah. Like if you had it already, you could already sell and get an yeah. offer and you knew for a fact, like, hey, like we're running a movie scene that's going to sell. You would sell now. You wouldn't wait. I got one call. Uh, I guess the, the gentleman was more interested in the company that was going to represent him. You brought that up with Lloyd, yeah. I did, yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, and I literally bombed it. Like, I, I, my mind blanked. I knew what I That's wanted cool. to say. That's cool. But yeah, that was my issue, and I just didn't even know how to answer it at one point. Tell me, you're really interested in my company. Um, was he more to the point, or was he more like analytical, or like really wanted explanations? No, was... just to the point because he was yeah. frustrated. I guess the previous agent just mm -hmm. listed get, he when angry? he listed it, and he was a, a little bit. I guess the previous agent listed the house and gave the wrong information, mm -hmm. and when people went in, mm. they were expecting something else. Mm. And so, okay, yeah, got it. Yeah. So that would be more important than the company if, if he told you that. But that's yeah. fine. Let's just handle the company, and then we can talk about that. Yeah. So tell me. You know, I really, I want, just say anything. Yeah, I, I just want to know scared. more about your company, man. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you heard of EXP? You haven't heard EXP? of EXP? Uh, no. Cool. So, yeah. uh, have you heard of Keller Williams? Keller Williams? I've seen a couple of signs around. So, the top people from KW basically got out and made EXP. What we've done is we, we took all the other traditional brokerage models and we supercharged them. So, it's completely cloud-based now, but we took all the stuff from the other companies that had some flaws and we made it better. Surprised you haven't heard of us. Uh, we're a new company that started about 
eight, nine years ago, and now we're at 30,000 agents projected to be at 100,000 agents within the next 18 months. Wow. Crazy, huh? Crazy, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of information, right? It is. I'm like, I'm like, is that recording say, so I can like, copy it? Right, okay. no, uh, this is recorded. Okay. Uh, so we can send it to you. Uh, let's, let's do it a different way uh, and, and just tell me, well, I want, give me a specific company to say any company. Yeah. Well, I want, I want Compass, man. You know, I like, I like them. They, they've been selling houses all around the neighborhood. You know, cool. So, so uh, Compass agents. You want, you want Compass and uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong because you feel like that they're the company who can actually get your home sold versus another brokerage or they have a better shot of getting it sold? Is that the... Yeah, I, I'd say so. Plus, you know, they're known in the neighborhood. I feel like they're more, more trusted okay. amongst the agents in the area. Yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Valid concern, David. Most people think that. Now, when a buyer is coming into your home, you, you think they're focused on the home or the company? Um, well, obviously the house. Yeah, obviously okay. the house. Exactly. Yeah. Now, as an agent, right, as, as an agent, do you know, like when you hire, like let's say you hire 